Hello, so this is sort of a quick tip on using a magnetic field or H-field probe for probing a target. So what I have here set up is a typical sort of side channel analysis demo um, where we have a UFO board with this X-mega target on it. And so you can see the X-mega right there. And the X-mega's got this little... Uh, shunt resistor in it that gives us our power measurement on the the chip whisperer light two part version over here So if you take a look on your computer um, You have this sort of waveform that you can see Moving around as the uh, the captures are going on and so this is the the device performing a yes Now what you often like to do is you would like to attack a device that maybe doesn't have this nice shunt resistor so you know, you might have something like a off-the-shelf development board or your own custom board um, where you don't have that shunt resistor available. But you do have, you know, the chip you want to, you're interested in. Um, and you're able to generate trigger signals and stuff like that that the chip whisperer would need. So it's sort of an evaluation um, environment. So what we're going to use in that case is what's known as a magnetic field or H-field probe. Um, so this is one of them by, by us, by New IE, but you can get a whole bunch of these magnetic field probes. Um, there's much more expensive ones that have either smaller heads or, you know, may have uh, specific characteristics you want, but this is more than enough for um, our tests here. And you'll notice on the end of it's this low noise amplifier. So what we have is, if we just take a little sort of closer look here, uh, we have a... SMA coupler uh, just to connect the H-field probe right to the low noise amplifier without having uh, as much cabling in the way. And to do the measurement, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my system and we're going to, you know, display the whole thing here. So we have the waveform running. I'm going to unplug it from the shunt. So this is the shunt I've added. You see the waveform dies on the computer. And I just plug in my, uh, my H-field probe or the output of the amplifier. Um, the other thing in the back, I should mention, there's a probe power supply. So this is just providing 3.3 uh, volts, so isolated ground, though, for the, uh, the amplifier. All right, so you'll notice on the computer, we have uh, no real waveform now. So the one change we're going to do is we're just going to increase the gain on the, the Chip Whisper Lite front end. So I'm just going to set this to maximum gain. So you see a little bit of noise. And this actually may be too much, but for the demo, who cares? We're just doing a real quick example here. Um, and basically what you can do is I'm just going to sort of put it over the chip, and you can see right away some sort of waveforms popping up. Um, but by moving it around, trying different orientations, you'll see different um, things appear on the screen. And ultimately, right now, I'm just sort of going by... By visual, um, you can actually do a lot better measurements to characterize the specific location. But if I move this maybe right around here, you can see on the screen these sort of peaks are appearing in very consistent locations. So this looks a lot like, you know, when we have the shunt resistor where we're seeing some repeatability in our power measurement. So I can move it around and we can see maybe... Over there, we can see it looks like some gaps in the power measurement. Um, so again, this is good. This looks like something very repeatable. So I'm going to guess around there might be a good spot. Uh, now, right now, I'm just holding this thing. So this is a very ad hoc sort of experiment. Uh, what you would like to do, you know, is often you just use like a pan of ice or something like that. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to rest it and see if I can't get just the right location uh, for it to stay for long enough for our testing. So we can move the resistor around a bit, or move the, the probe around a bit, sorry, and the target board, try to make it a little more parallel. And as I'm moving this, I'm just looking at the computer screen here to try to get when I was getting those nice, um, look like some nice peaks. Come on. So as you can imagine, if you have a proper vice or 
something to hold it, makes this a little easier. Um, so I might try something like that. There seems to be some some peak. So when I when I remember back to the uh, the power analysis waveform, we saw like in here I think was maybe the SBox operations were here. Um, so that looks vaguely like it could be useful. So I'm just going to abort this. I I just had it running um, without writing data to disk. So as a sub hint, uh, one thing you can do in the Chip Whisperer software is you can turn off the trace format, and then it won't write anything to disk. So I'm going to turn it back on, and I'm just going to tell it to do maybe 200 traces. Um, I don't know how well this will work, because also the probe's probably going to move on me a little bit. Let's save a new project. Call H test. All right, so anyway, this is uh, basically how you're able to use an H-field probe for doing these types of measurements. So rather than relying on the, the shunt resistor or modifying the board, you can get away with actually just putting this sort of probe over top and doing all your measurements. So looks like that's done already. Go ahead and save. And I'll open that project in the analyzer and see how well it worked. Just test. Just results table. So that's old. Ignore that. Um, and so it looks like it's not quite as good as a shunt resistor this position, but in about a hundred traces, it's almost broken the entire key. So that's still pretty handy. Um, and it'll depend on the chip. So the X Meg is actually, you know, a fairly low power device. Uh, so you don't see much leakage. You may see more if you're trying something on like a, a ARM device or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, you do see there, it has recovered the complete encryption key. And all I've done is use this magnetic field probe on top of my same development board that I had done the other side channel analysis on. So obviously you can do this over top of like a standard development board that has no side channel analysis um, stuff put into it. And what you'll actually find is that because this board has that resistor in line, uh, you may get a little worse performance out of these boards. The resistor is slowing down the uh, the clock edges of basically when the power is going into the chip, it's going through this resistor, which will be reducing the instantaneous surges slightly uh, compared to a normal, you know, dev board or anything has a really nice power distribution network. So you should see some uh, higher current peaks inside the chip, giving you a better signal on the HField Pro. So thanks for checking it out.